With number seven, I would normally encounter a little bit of a problem with my reading strategy. So remember, my reading strategy is that I do not read the passages. I go directly to the questions and I start answering. Now there are places where that's going to be difficult. Most of the time I'm going to have a line reference, but for number seven, I don't have a line reference. So what do I do? How do I handle that annoyance? Well, I just go to the next question and see if it gives me a line reference. And sure enough, number eight is an evidence pair that goes with number seven. So these two questions are linked. So yeah, seven doesn't have a line reference, but eight gives me four line references that I'm going to use to solve this question. So I still am okay not having read the entire passage. So when I go through this, though, I need to kind of make sure I follow a, a good process. And this is where the, the QLC method is going to be really helpful again. This is my way of sorting through pretty much every reading question, but with evidence pairs, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. So the first thing I do is I read the question. And I try to understand, is there anything in particular that I need to focus on as I read the, the line references? So in this case, it can reasonably be inferred from the passage that Haruni provides Nawab with a motorcycle mainly because, okay, so the focus of this question is on Haruni. Why does he give the motorcycle, right? So why does he give him the motorcycle? That's what I'm thinking about as now I read these line references. So there's the Q, Q is for question, L is for line references. And I'm gonna look at these things and anything that doesn't tell me a little bit about what Haruni's thinking is, I'm going to be able to eliminate. So first off, 65 to 66. And what's the solution, asked Haruni, seeing that they had come to the crux? Well, it doesn't say why he gave him the motorcycle. It's just kind of asking a question, and then I guess they're going to talk about the motorcycle. So this, to me, doesn't feel like it answers the question. It, it may be in, it is involved in the plot, but... I need evidence of why he decided to give the motorcycle. This is just him asking a question. So that's no good. Next is 66 to 68. That's right here. He didn't particularly care one way or the other, except that it touched on his comfort, a matter of great interest to him. Oh, okay. Well, it's saying that Haruni cares about his own comfort. So I would just maybe write that next to here so that I don't forget because there's a lot of stuff moving around, it's very likely that I forget what I've read, so this is me just keeping track. C, 75 to 76. He even managed to extract an allowance for gasoline. Okay, well, that has nothing to do about Haruni's reasons. That's just something else that Haruni gave him, gave Nawab, so that doesn't help. And 80 to 81. He could now range further, doing a much wider business. Okay, again, that's not even about Haruni. This is about... This is about Nawab. Um, he, the, he here is, yeah, is talking about Nawab. So this is a good example where sometimes you might need to read a little extra beyond the line references. When we have a line reference in a question, we're supposed to read plus one sentence on either side. When the line reference is in the answer choices, like these evidence ones, we usually can just stick to the line reference. We don't need to read extra. But one place where I do is when I have these kind of random like pronouns that I don't know who they're referring to. It could refer to Haruni. It could refer to Nawab. If I read back a little, it turns out it's about Nawab. So this doesn't help me. And the question is really about Haruni's reasoning. So I don't really know what this has to do with anything. And so that leaves me with B. And this is a rare thing. A lot of times when I go through this process, I don't get down to one answer choice. I usually have two or three even that I'm thinking about. That's why I like to make those little notes so I can keep track of which one said what. It's okay if you end up picking an answer at this point, but you really want to be flexible as you head into step three, which is the C step, the choices. We want to make sure that all three things match. The question has to be answered by one of the choices, which needs to be supported by the line reference. Three things need to line up. So we look at these choices and we see, does anything have to do with Haruni's comfort? That's what I'm really hoping for here. Choice A, Haruni appreciates that Nawab has to work hard to support his family. That might be true, but I don't remember reading anything about that. I don't, I don't really get the sense that Haruni cares about Nawab 
if anything, the line reference that we read is that Haruni cares about Haruni. He cares about himself. So this is maybe a little cruel, but it doesn't seem that Haruni really cares that Nawab is helping him so much. Choice B, Haruni sees benefit to himself from giving Nawab a motorcycle. That looks good. Benefit to himself matches nice with caring about his own comfort. Okay, so I would keep that in the mix. Choice C, Nawab's speech is the most eloquent that Haruni has ever heard. Ooh, some real problems from an SAT perspective here. We're not aware of all of Haruni's life. We have no idea what other kinds of speeches he has listened to. To say that this is the most eloquent speech he has ever heard is really, really strong in a very bad way. This is not proven by these lines. It may be true. I don't think it is. But it may be true, but it's not supported by these lines as evidence. So we have to be really careful with words like most and that he ever heard. That's, that's really intense. Choice D, Nawab threatens to quit if Haruni doesn't agree to give him a motorcycle. This is a choice that a lot of people pick because we read in other places that there's a little bit of this going on, that there's this kind of quid pro quo, I'll keep working for you if you give me the motorcycle. But notice that wasn't in the evidence that we were given for this question. This happens a lot. This is why I said everything needs to match up. We need to follow the QLC method and make sure all three of these steps kind of go together. This may be the answer if we had the evidence choice to support it, but we don't. Plus, it is a little strong. Nawab isn't really threatening to quit. We saw this in the last, in uh, question number five, actually. Her, Nawab is kind of bluffing. He really just wants this motorcycle, and he's using this kind of over-the-top language to get his way. So he's not actually threatening to quit. He's more just kind of making a little bit of a stink so he can get what he wants. So B is correct because it matches with my line reference evidence, and it answers the original question, what does Haruni think? What is Haruni's point of view here? We need to make sure we keep track of the right person. This is about Haruni and what he is deciding. And he's deciding, deciding based on his own comfort, which is of great interest to him. Tough question, but the QLC method keeps us organized and helps us get the right answer.